First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Yongnam Lee to give, a, to give this nice chance to talk about my research area in this nice place and in this nice country. Uh, secondly, I feel real, terribly sorry for not being showed up during the first three days of this conference because I have some teaching duty in my university. And secondly, I'm also terribly sorry for my topic because this is not about algebraic surface. So, <clears throat> please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> and during, throughout this talk, uh, the base field is always complex numbers. <coughs> and we will consider a non hyperelliptic curve of genus 3. And E is a vector bundle of rank 2 defined on this curve C. And let's recall what the definition of the stability of the vector bundle. E is stable if we have the following inequalities. So the degree of F is less than the degree of E over 2 for all subline bundle F of E. <coughs> and if you have, if you include equality, then we have, we call E to be semi stable. Then we will denote by SUC2L the moduli space of semi stable vector bundles of rank 2 on curve C with determinant is the line bundle L on C. And especially in this talk, we will be we'll mainly interested in this moduli space with the canonical determinant. <coughs> so this is the main object of this talk. And for E, for a vector bundle E inside this moduli space, E is strictly semi-stable. If and only if there exists the line bundle L, line sub bundle L of E for which the degree of L is equal to 2. <coughs> so from this, the set of strictly semi stable vector bundles inside this moduli space is parametrized by the Kumba variety of the peak 2C, which is the quotient of this abelian variety by a, natural by a natural involution, where this involution sends L to KCL inverse. And from the theory on the moduli space of vector bundles on curves, we can see, we can check that this set of strictly semi-stable forms a singular locus of this moduli space. And then we will consider the following map called the theta map.
data map is defined so data map is a map from SUC to KC to 2 theta 0 which is canonically isomorphic to 2 theta That's right, that's right. But the M is for the other moduli space later. Okay. Maybe if you, N. if you want N. Okay. Later I need to change the determinant. Okay. And this map is defined by sending E to the set of line bundles with degree 0 for which H0 of E tensor L is not trivial. And this is <coughs> and where theta 0 is a symmetric theta divisor of peak 0 and here theta is the theta divisor of peak 2. And we have a canonical isomorphism between these two spaces. Then in general, this theta map is not even morphism, but in this special case of genus 3, this is morphism, and in fact, this is an embedding. And if you take a look at this data map in more detail, then here, peak to C is a principally polarized abelian variety with polarization given by theta divisor. And it has dimension 3 because the genus of the curve is 3. And then consider the map given by the 2 theta divisor, 2 theta linear system, then we have a map from here to 2 theta star, which is 7 dimensional projective space, and each image is the Kuma variety. <coughs> so if you compare this map and the theta map, then we can see that phi kumma variety of peak to C as a singular locus of the moduli space is equal to the image given by the image under this two theta linear system. And the uh, famous theorem by the Co by Kobo and Narashiman and Ramanan, we have the following statement. There exists sorry. The moduli space is a subspace inside P7 is... I don't yeah. Phi is an embedding, what you mean. If, if then you have a singular locus. You mean, okay, well the, the moduli space is singular. Yes, okay. yes, yes. The the singular locus of this moduli space is exactly this Kuma variety. And this moduli space as a subspace of P7 is the unique peak to C and uh, inside peak to C we collect the two torsion point and this with respect to this group action, 
it is invariant unique invariant unique quartic hypersurface yes yes quartic hypersurface in P7 whose singular locus is exactly the Kumo variety. So this is the theorem by Kobu and Naroshiman and Ramana. And the question is this moduli space no Kobu proved that, that there exists a unique yeah. yes. he proved but uh, exactly but he didn't know about the vector bundles. So when did the, when did Narasiman in which year? Uh, I think seventy or something, I'm not sure. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He said he used the unique, uh, I mean, Eisenberg environment to their surface. Exactly, the exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that the conjecture is that is about the rationality of this moduli space. And uh, our main goal is to study the rationality problem of this moduli space. And here in this talk, we will introduce several rational sub varieties of this moduli space. And one way is in terms of the special sub variety called the Brunet locus. So we define. WR to be the closure of the set of stable vector bundles for which E has at least R plus 1 linearly independent global sections. And it is called the Brunet locus. And from each definition, we have a natural stratification And in, in fact, it can be proven that W3 is empty set And the, one of the well-known facts about this Brunetto locus and especially on W0, which will be denoted by W is W is a hyperplane section of this moduli space in this embedding. which is tangent to the Kuma variety along the image of the theta divisor. <coughs> and in particular, inside W0, we have a vector bundle on C which is the normal vector bund normal bundle of C inside peak to C. And this is this can be shown to be the unique element in W2. And this point can be proven can be proven the triple point of W0.
And since W is the unique hyperplane section and our moduli space is a hypersurface in P7, so this is a hypersurface in P6, quantic hypersurface in P6. That W2 contains a point. Is that the point? Yes, W2 is in fact a single point space. Right. And that's the point. This is the point. Ah, W2, I mean. No, no. What you took and the modular space? Ah, normal bundle. That's a normal bundle, okay, now we Maybe. <laughs> And for the moduli space is bad notation in the peak to C. Yeah. And so W is a quartic hypersurface in P6 with a triple point. So this is rational. So here we have a one example of rational sub variety of the of the cobalt quartic. And second example of the rational sub-variety is given by the extension family. So, I mean, before introducing another example. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is a triple point for the section, but not for the variety. Okay. That's right, that's right. And in fact, this W is a hyperplane section of the cobalt portic is a image of P5 where P5 is the extension family of so here we have the extension So in fact, this P5 is the moduli space of stable pairs where by pair we mean a pair of vector bundle of rank 2 with canonical determinant and a section. And this map is really given by the complete linear system of IC twisted by 2 where C is embedded into P5 by 2KC. And the, so that means this rational sub variety can be also induced from this extension family. Now let's talk about, let's in, let me introduce another example of extension family. So let us choose one divisor whose degree is 1, then define PD as define PD to be the extension family. Uh, the conjecture is rationality, but purely rationality is... Uh, it is well known. well known. Yes. Not just for this moduli space. In general, moduli space of vector bundles. Some, some line bundle on, on the double covering or something. Yeah, that's one way, but in more in general, you can construct a certain extension family, yes. And this is the extension of OC, KC minus D, by OCD. And since the degree of D is 1, this is of degree 3. And in fact, Aaron Bertram investigated the geometry of this, the geometry of the map from this kind of extension family to our moduli space. And in this special case, the map from this P3 to our moduli space is really a morphism, and it is linear embedding with respect to this embedding. <coughs> so that means inside this moduli space as a quartic hypersurface in P7, 
we have plenty of rational sub-varieties. Now, let me introduce uh, the other method to understand the geometry of the cobalt cortic using the restriction map. So since C is an hyperelliptic curve, so C can be embedded into P2. And can consider a map, say, P4 from the cobalt cortic, sorry, M14 to our cobalt cortic, where M14. I mean, W is really covered by a rational variety of the two. Is, ah, yes, yes. I mean, you this. You just take the second lines to do these pairs of points. Uh, excuse me, which one? You take W, and then you take this P3. Yes. And take pairs of points, uh, and then takes uh, residual intersections. This makes a... Uh, uh, you mean the uh, projective bundle whose fiber is this P3 over pick one? I mean, this is a point. Yes. I take a point in P3, yes. and a point in W. Then I take the line, this line will, will meet into other points. Ah, okay. So, and this shows that you get a, a covering of the grid 2 from a rational variety. Mm-hmm. I see. And in fact, uh, you mean the degree 2 covering of the of, of, of the, the module of the cobalt cortic. And in fact, that's a well-known fact. Yeah. I think it's proven by, I think, Bobil or yeah. yeah. Thank you. And where this moduli, sp this space is the moduli space of stable chips of rank two on projective plane with chunk classes is one and four. And this map is defined by sending E, a shift defined on P2, to its restriction to this curve C. And <coughs> one of our result is that this map is dominant. And why and uh, this is the main result we will use to understand the geometry of this cobalt cortex and we will study the geometry of this moduli space and this restriction map. And first of all, the left hand side this Moduli space on P2 is rational. This one was proven by Hulig, and Hulig insists that even before him, everybody knows about this result, but the, he's the first one to write it down, I think. Excuse me? What is the dimension? I mean this? The dimension of this space is 12. This is 6. And the one way to see the rationality of this moduli space is due to Dolgachev and Kapranov. And what they did is to consider a hyperplane arrangement
of P2 in general position and they consider the logarithmic shapes And since our hyperplane arrangement is in general position, this is a bundle. So one H or log H? Log H. Okay, so yes. Right log. Ah, okay. And for our convenience, let me write it as just E of H. Forgive me, not putting log here again. Uh, and then the theorem by Dolgachev and Kapranov is that the set of this kind of logarithmic bundles twisted by O negative 1 on P2, where this hyperplane arrangement is six lines in general position. And this set forms a uh, Charisky open dense subset of M14. And since this family is rational, so that we can obtain M14 is rational, and as Professor Katanezi mentioned, from this, we can also obtain the unilaterality of the Cobalt Quartic. <coughs> and from this result, with the result of Dolgachev and Kapranov, we can obtain more example of rational sub-variety of the Cobalt Quartic. So the first example, we will consider the following P1 family of hyperplane arrangement of six lines. So we have six lines in general position. Choose one line and pick one point, which is not an intersection point, and give a freedom on this line containing this point, then we will have P1 family. And from this, we have so P1 family HT, and then from this, we can obtain the logarithmic chips E H sub T. And this is locally free, except when this line pass through one of the intersection points of the others. So that case is exactly 5 choose 2, except 10 cases with triple point. So the picture is like this. This is our triple point, say P. Then for this triple point, for this hyperplane arrangement, we can still define logarithmic shift, but here in this case, this shift is not locally free anymore. And in fact, if you take the W of this logarithmic shifts, we have this exact sequence. Where P is a triple point, P is the triple point. And then if this is in general position, so P is not contained in C, if we restrict this sequence to C, we have E H to C is isomorphic to E H double dual restrict to C. And in fact you can prove we can prove that this is contained in the Brunet locus W0. And since W is the unique hyperplane section of the Cobalt Cortic, so that means this image, 
the image of this P1 inside the cobalt cortex under the restriction map. So we have P1 to M14 and it maps to the cobalt cortex. So the image of this P1 inside the cobalt cortex meets the unique hyperplane section in 10 points. So that's the rational curve of degree 10. It is. In this case, it's better? Yeah, it is reflexive. It's always blue or just for this particular spot? On P2. On P2, I think. Yes. Because it's in bank. Ah. Is it? It's just the torsion free and therefore the. Ah, you're right. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So, definition of the vector bundle being reflexive is these two are isomorphic. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was also confused. Okay. Okay, the other example is that consider the following P1 family of hyperplane arrangement. Say, here we have six lines in general position. Pick one intersection point and then give a freedom to one of the one of the line through this point. Then we have P1 family. Or the other example, again consider the same six lines in general position and pick one intersection point and give freedom two lines through this point. Then we have P2 family. And then the issue, issue is to issue is what is the image of these two families inside the cobalt cortex, and that's still in progress, because in unlike this case, here in these two cases we will have a hyperplane arrangement which is not simple normal crossing, so which which make us not to define the logarithmic shape. So somehow we have some work to do here in this case. Excuse me? It's a, it's a P1 times P1 family. So the question by the symmetry. And the last example I want to introduce is about the Schwarzenberger bundle. What was the point of this family? Can you repeat? Just use the name rational, rational families inside the curve of four. Yes. Okay, these are the rational subdivisions. Yes, and, uh, and in fact, our main goal, our final goal is to construct the six dimensional family of hyperplane arrangement which is rational, and its image. We, I mean, so we want to construct a certain family of hyperplane arrangement of six dimensional, six dimension, and each image to the cobalt cortex is the whole cobalt cortex. So we want this to be by rational map. So we want to increase the dimension of our family. And the reason why we are interested in this family is that we want to investigate this kind of family. We pick three points and each point contains two lines and we give these lines freedom. Then we have six dimensional family which is rational. So we want to investigate the map from here to the cobalt cortex and we want it to be birational. And uh, our next example is about the Schwarzenberger bundle. I mean, let me define, let me introduce the definition of the Schwarzenberger bundle. So here in the previous board, we consider the projected plane. We consider the dual of it and choose one smooth conic. And its dual 
is again smooth conic in P2. And then we consider the instance variety of P2 cross P2 star And inside this P2 star, we have a smooth cone, and it's pre-image. Say this is P, this is Q. Its pre-image is, say, X. And X is now a double covering. of P2 ramified along <coughs> Q star. Then we define the following vector bundles. E, Q, and A is defined as follows. P lower star, Q upper star, Ln tensor width O P2 A where A is integer and Ln is a line bundle of degree N on conic Q. And this is called the Schwarzenberger bundle. And in a special case, it satisfies, it admits a resolution called the Steiner resolution. When the integer a is zero, and the the one of the result by Dolgachev and Kapranov is that this Schwarzenberger bundle, when n equals 4, a equals 0, is isomorphic to a logarithmic bundle, where h is six lines oscillating the dual conic. So from this result, we can consider the restriction map. So we will define the map psi 1 to be from P5, which is the family of conics, to the cobalt cortex. Sending conic Q to say this, let me denote this Schwarzenberger bundle by E of Q. Sending E of Q restricted to C. <coughs> ah, so we have to twist by negative one. So EQ, 4 minus 1, restrict to C. And this we will denote by E of Q. And let me recall some sub-variety of this P5. In that P5, we have Veronese surface 
And its second variety is a cubic hypersurface whose single locus is this Veronese surface. And inside this Veronese surface, we can embed C by the bicanonical embedding. <coughs> then for singular conic inside V3 minus S, Q is equal to LX union LY where X and Y are two different points on P2, on P2. So LX, LYs are the lines corresponding to these two points on P2 star. This is the second variety. V yes. Yeah, this is the second variety of lines of S. So Q is from V3 minus S, that's 2, yes. <coughs> so then consider a hyperplane section H, which is like this. Here on P2, we have two different points, X and Y. And consider any six lines, and three of them pass through this point, and the other three pass through this Y then still we can define logarithmic shape <clears throat> and this logarithmic shape is not locally free and if you take the double dual it fits into this exact sequence and here if we restrict this sequence to C when X and Y are in general, in general then we have E H restricted to C is isomorphic to E, H double dual restricted to C, and in fact we can prove that E, H double dual C is contained in the Brunet locus W1. That means it has at least two linearly independent global sections. And then our proposition is that if we restrict this map from P5 to this V3, from V3 to NKC is given by the complete linear system of IC twist by 2 and its restriction to V3. I mean, this is the rank 2 conic, so we have uh, two lines. And then we have a point corresponding to these two lines in the project yeah, space. Yes. I mean, so the three lines do X and Y, they're not arbitrary. Uh, this, these lines. That's arbitrary. But then you get the four dimensional term. But uh, they determine the same, they, the same shift. It was proven in the paper by Dorgachev and Kaplan. Ah, they determine the same shift. Yes, shifts. yes. <coughs> so the reason why we, doing, we are considering hyperplane arrangement is that this Schwarzenberg bundle is defined only for the smooth conic. And by the result, by Dorgachev and Kaplan, this Schwarzenberg bundle can be interpreted as a logarithmic bundle. So we use the generalization of the logarithmic bundle to generalize the Schwarzenberg bundle to Schwarzenberg shape. And then if we restrict this 
math defined on P5 to V3, and we can prove that this map is given by this complete linear system using the fact that its restriction to C is inside this Brunetta locus W1. That's mainly because E H double dual is a stable vector bundle on P2 whose first, first chunk class is 1, second chunk class is 2. We have a, we have a, and in fact, this is a proper transform of V3, the cubic hypersurface inside the blob of P5 along the Veronese surface. And in fact, we have a rational restriction rational map from here to the cobalt cortex. And this can be shown to factors through this cubic hypersurface. And this one can be proven. This one can be proven to be given by the complete linear system IC of 2 and its restriction on V3. So that's why we that's how we can obtain this proposition. <laughs> and so the natural question, and in fact the purpose, the main purpose of this talk is to ask a question. And my first question, our first question is, is this true for all, is this true for the map on all P5? If this is true, then as we observed for the Brillnet locus W0, W0 is the image of P5 given by the complete linear system, this, and this is rational sobriety. Rational hyperplane section. So that means we will get another rational sub-variety and in fact this one, the image of this one would be different from this hyperplane section because here the general vector bundle in this Brunel locus has at least one linearly independent section. You already mentioned in the beginning that W0 is rational. Yes, this is rational and our claim would be the image of this map is different kind of rational sub-variety. We didn't prove it yet. But if the image, can you feel it? You're claiming that the image is in W0. No. So this is what we know. And from this observation, we guess that this map is but given by. Is that maybe you're using the symbol W0. <coughs> In the beginning, you have W0 and you call it W, and then you say that W is rational because it has a, a triple point. Yeah, W0 is rational with that reason. Yeah. Now, if you have this map, you have another rational. Yeah, I didn't call it W. I mean, this is given by the same complete linear system. What are you writing? Sorry, I don't understand yeah. what you're writing in the, among the brackets. Ah, okay. So this map, uh, this is P X one O C K C O C, and this is the Brunetta locus we introduced in the beginning. Yes. And since it has a triple point, this is rational that we know. And and this is one story. Uh, and so here. They look the same because. They by the same system. By the same system. Yes. But it's a map. That's the different map. And that, in fact, the image, they are different sub-variety because here, I mean, they are different sub-variety as sub-variety of the cobalt cortex because the general point in this Brunetta locus has at least one linearly, at least one global section. Here, the general one 
has only trivial global section. So they will give us, they would give us different rational sub variety. And the second question is about what is this sub variety? What is the image of this map? Contained in question one. I mean, uh, question one. Absolutely, it is contained in n. It, yeah. it is contained in n. That's, uh, but this is not clear. Ah, that's obvious. In, in fact, that's easy to calculate. I mean, what so is then the question. The question is. Uh, uh, the question is. So <laughs> this map is defined. The image is contained in this moduli space. And the question is, is what linear system defines this map? Ah, uh, is. Ah, sorry, sorry. Is. Okay, <coughs> so the second question is what is, what's, what do we know about the image of this map? So we investigate, we observe something and let me introduce this. So let us consider the moduli space of stable ships on P2 again with first chunk class 0, second chunk class 2 and for stable vector bundle E this is of rank 2. E, we consider the set S of E to be defined as the set of the lines in P2 for which H0 of E twist by negative 1 restricted to L is not 0. This is called the line L satisfying this condition is called the jumping line and the result by bars is that for this vector bundle and this set S of E, S of E is a smooth conic and it determines E uniquely. So from this, the stable vector bundle E inside the set of stable vector bundle E, which will be denoted by M0, is isomorphic to P5 minus the cubic hypersurface, which parameterize smooth conic on P2, on P2 star. And in fact, can prove can see that the whole moduli space is isomorphic to P5. So, can consider the following map. <coughs> I mean, before that, we can prove that for general vector bundle E inside this moduli space can prove that E restriction to C is stable. So that means this is an element in NOC. This is the moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles on curve C with canonical determinant and rank 2. So from this, we can construct, we can consider another map, Psi2, which is from P5 to NOC. <coughs> then we can observe that for E, which is non-locally free shifts, inside this moduli space, if we take the double dual 
it fits into this sequence. Where E double star is the direct sum of OP2 twice. And if P and Q, these two points are in general position, if we restrict it to C, can prove that E restriction to C is isomorphic to OC, the direct sum of OC twice. <coughs> so, So for singular conic, general singular conic Q on P2 star, C1 of Q, we consider two different vector bundles, C1 of Q, C2 of Q, and this is OC2, and this one is containing W1. So that means, that implies that H0 of C1Q tensor with C2Q is 4 in general. <coughs> and what's the meaning of this? So for that, let me introduce, let's take a look at another theta map. Sending E to the set of line bundles with degree 2 for which H0 of E tensor L is not 0. Okay, so this is uh, another cobalt quartic. Now, Due to Pauli, there exists self-duality between these two cobalt cortex. So we have two theta and it's dual. And inside here we have this cobalt cortex. Here we have another cobalt cortex. And this is a quartic hypersurface, so from that equation, we have a polar map. <coughs> this maps N O C birationally to N K C. So this is called the self-duality of the cobalt quartic. And moreover, if you choose, if you denote the image of E1 by E2, then it holds only when H0 of E1 tensor with E2 is exactly equal to 4. And uh, in fact, in general, this number is between 2 and 4 by the Riemann theorem on the generalized theta divisor. Now, the point is that in this case, if, we, if E1 and E2 are connected by this self-duality, its tensor takes the maximum dimension of the zero cohomology. So our second question is that the image of C2 of Q under the self-duality is C1 of Q. That's our second question. <coughs> and in fact, let's see some evidence of this. Not really evidence, it's just an observation. For smooth conic Q in P2 star, we can denote by E1 
and E2, its corresponding vector bundles inside M02 and M14 as before. Then in fact, we've shown that E2 is a logarithmic bundle. And in fact, we can see that E1 is also a logarithmic bundle. And they are really, I mean, E1 is logarithmic bundle tensor with O negative 1, where H is now five lines, not six lines, oscillating Q star. So from this result, E1 and E2 can fit into this exact sequence. Yes, six lines for E2. Yes. Five lines. They are all oscillating Q star. And this is the remaining line. So H is the tangent line. H is a tangent line. And in fact, this H is a jumping line of E1 and E2 at the same time. And we can prove the following. H is 0 of E1 tensor with E2 is 2 when E1 and E2 are obtained from the same conic. In fact, in general, H is 0 of E1 tensor with E2 where E1 is from M02 E2 is from M14, it is between 1 and 2. And H0, E1 tensor with E2 is equal to, is equal to 2 if and only if they are obtained from the same cone. So that means for this choice of conic, we can accomplish, we can obtain the maximum value of the zero comma square dimension. So it is rough guess, but that's why we guess that this one might take the maximum value. Yeah, that's baby guess. And then, <coughs> There are several ways in which we try to prove this question too, but uh, we are still in progress. So I think this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.